Ever wondered why your plants aren't thriving as they should? It's more than just sunlight and water. The soil you use plays a pivotal role too. Today, we're diving into the world of soil, understanding its types, and why matching the right soil to your plant type can make all the difference. More than that, we'll delve into the signs that tell you when your green friends need a new pot. By the end of this video, you'll be a pro at selecting the perfect soil for your plants and knowing the best time to repot. Soil is not just dirt, it's a complex mixture of minerals, organic matter, and life. Now let's dive into the world beneath our feet and explore the different types of soil. First up, we have sandy soil. This type is gritty to touch and has large particles that drain quickly, making it dry and low in nutrients. It's perfect for plants craving well-drained conditions like cacti or succulents. Next is clay soil. Clay is sticky and smooth when wet, hardening when dry. Its dense structure retains water and nutrients well, but poor drainage can be an issue. Roses, fruit trees, and shrubs often thrive in clay soil. Then we have silty soil. Silty soil is soft and soapy to the touch, with smaller particles than sandy soil. It retains water longer but drains better than clay soil, offering a fertile environment for most plants. Peaty soil is next on our list. Dark in color and rich in organic matter, it retains a lot of water, which can make it too acidic for some plants. However, with a bit of lime to balance the pH, it becomes a haven for vegetables and ericaceous shrubs. Loamy soil, often considered the gold standard of soils, combines the best of sandy silk clay soils. It's fertile, drains well, retains moisture, and is easy to work with. A wide array of plants, from vegetables to flowers, thrive in loamy soil. Finally, we have chalky soil. It's alkaline due to the limestone and chalk from which it's derived. This can cause yellowing in leaves, but is ideal for certain plants like lilacs and cabbage that appreciate the high pH. Each soil type has its unique properties and influences plant growth differently. From the water-retaining clay soil perfect for roses, to the quick-draining sandy soil loved by cacti, to the all-around amazing loamy soil, there's a soil for every plant and purpose. Remember, the type of soil you have can make or break your gardening success. Different plants have different soil needs. This statement is as simple as it is profound. Let's dive deeper into this topic by exploring which soil types are best suited for various plants. We'll start with house plants. These indoor beauties generally need a well-draining soil mix that's rich in organic matter. A good choice might be a blend of peat moss, perlite, and vermiculite. This mix retains moisture yet drains well, preventing waterlogging and root rot. Next, let's turn our attention to vegetables. These hardworking plants are often heavy feeders and need nutrient-rich soil to produce their bounty. A loamy soil, a balanced blend of sand, silt, and clay, is often the best choice for vegetable gardens. It holds nutrients well and has good drainage, both vital for bountiful harvests. Now onto ornamentals. Ornamental plants can be a bit more specific in their soil preferences. For example, succulents and cacti prefer sandy soil that drains quickly and doesn't hold onto moisture, while roses thrive in slightly acidic, loamy soil. Of course, these are just general guidelines. Each plant species has its own unique soil preferences, and even within species, there can be variations. For example, not all houseplants will thrive in the same soil mix. Ferns, for instance, prefer a more acidic soil than most other houseplants. The key to successful gardening, whether indoors or out, is understanding these preferences. Before you plant anything, research its soil needs. Is it a heavy or light feeder? Does it prefer acidic, neutral, or alkaline soil? Does it need well-draining soil, or does it prefer to stay a bit more moist? Once you've answered these questions, you can select the right soil or create your own blend to meet your plant's needs. By understanding your plant's soil preferences, you can maximize its potential for healthy growth. Remember, the right soil is the foundation of any successful garden, and by matching the soil to your plant types, you're setting yourself up for a lush, thriving garden. By understanding your plant's soil preferences, you can maximize its potential for healthy growth. So, how do you know when it's time to repot your plant? Well, there are several signs that your plant might be trying to tell you it's time for a larger home. One of the most common signs is when your plant becomes root-bound. 
This is when the roots have taken up so much space in the pot that they start circling around the inside, causing a dense web that strangles the plant. If you notice this, it's definitely time for a new pot. Another sign to look out for is nutrient deficiency. If you've been feeding your plant regularly, but it's still showing signs of poor health, such as yellowing leaves or lack of new growth, it might be because the nutrients in the soil have been exhausted. In this case, repotting with fresh soil can give your plant the boost it needs. Waterlogging is yet another sign that your plant might need repotting. If water sits on the surface of the soil for a long time after watering, or if the pot feels unusually heavy, it could mean that the soil is compacted and not draining well. This can cause root rot, a serious condition that can be fatal to your plant. Repotting into a larger pot with fresh, well-draining soil can help solve this problem. The last sign we'll cover today is stunted growth. If your plant seems to have stopped growing altogether, it might be because it's run out of room in its current pot. Just like humans, plants need space to grow and develop. If your plant has stopped growing, it might be time to give it some more space by repotting. Of course, these aren't the only signs that your plant might need repotting, but they're some of the most common. Remember, plants can't tell us when they're uncomfortable, so it's up to us to read their signs and respond accordingly. Being alert to these signs can help you take timely action and save your plant's life. Repotting doesn't have to be a daunting task. Indeed, it's an essential part of keeping your plants healthy and vibrant. Let's break it down into simple, manageable steps. First things first, you need to choose an appropriate new pot. It should be just a size bigger than the current one, giving your plant's roots enough room to grow, but not so much that it drowns in excess soil. Remember, too much space can lead to overwatering issues. Next, you'll want to prepare your pot by adding a layer of fresh potting soil at the bottom. This creates a cushion for the plant's roots and provides them with new nutrients. You might also want to consider adding a small piece of mesh over the drainage hole to prevent soil from washing away when watering. Now comes the part where you'll need to gently remove your plant from its current pot. Tip it sideways, hold it gently by the stems or leaves, and tap the bottom of its pot until the plant slides out. Resist the temptation to pull it out by the stem, as this can damage the plant. Once the plant is out, it's time to examine the root ball. If the roots are tightly wound around each other, known as being root-bound, you'll want to gently tease them apart. This encourages them to grow outward into the new soil. Then place your plant into its new home. Adjust the amount of soil under the root ball until the plant's base is at the same level as the rim of the pot. Fill in around the plant with more potting soil, pressing it down lightly to eliminate any air pockets. After you've repotted, give your plant a good watering. This will help settle the soil and hydrate your plant after its big move. However, be careful not to overwater. You want the soil to be moist, not soggy. Lastly, it's important to place the newly repotted plant in a spot where it can recover from the repotting stress. Generally, a location with indirect light and away from harsh conditions is ideal. With these steps, you can repot your plants confidently and ensure their continued growth. Repotting is a chance to give your plants a fresh start, and with a little practice, it will become second nature. Choosing the right soil and knowing when to repot are critical to your gardening success. So let's take a moment to recap what we've covered today. We dove into the world of soil types, understanding their different properties and how they can impact plant growth. Remember, sandy soil provides great drainage but may need a nutrient boost while clay soil retains moisture but can be heavy and difficult for roots to penetrate. We also matched soil types to plant needs as each plant has its own unique requirements. House plants generally thrive in a well-draining potting mix, while vegetables often prefer a loamy soil rich in organic matter. Signs that your plant needs repotting can range from water pooling on the surface to roots poking out of the drainage holes. It's not just about growth, but ensuring the plant has enough space and nutrients to continue thriving. When it comes to repotting, remember to be gentle with the roots and always use a pot that's one size larger than the current one. Add fresh soil to the mix, but don't compress it too much to ensure the roots have room to breathe. And finally, 
Maintaining your soil is just as important as choosing the right type. Regularly check for signs of nutrient deficiency and adjust your watering and feeding schedule as needed. Now, armed with this knowledge, go forth and garden with confidence.